federal government unlocks gas potentials to industrialize the economy. Federal government launches 50 billion naira export expansion facility program. Federal and state government's debt profile rise to 32.92 trillion naira, says the National Bureau of Statistics, plus non-interest capital market full of potential, says Securities and Exchange Commission SEC. Details of these and more on business experts on the network service of the NTA. We are reaching you live from Abuja, the nation's capital. And I am Leah Katun, Baba Tunde. to the business of the day now to is to unleash her enormous gas potentials towards uplifting the economy and driving industrialization as a next logic pathway to the nation's glorious future. President Mohamed Buhari stated these are the formal launch of the decade of gas in Nigeria and correspondent Adam Usambo from the State House has this report. The official launch of the decade of gas in Nigeria sets the tone for what could best be described as a revolution in the critical subsector of the nation's economy. It demonstrates the resolve by the Buhari presidency to effectively develop and utilize gas as a national priority to, amongst others, stimulate economic growth, improve Nigeria's energy mix, drive investments, and provide the much-needed jobs for the teeming citizens of the country. I can assure you that President Muhammad Buhari has the political will to surmount the challenges and continue in a determined pursuit of transforming Nigeria into a gas-based industrialized nation. We are grateful to the Excellency Mr. President for the continued support and interest in the National Nigerian Gas Expansion Program and other initiatives geared towards greater gas mobilization and utilization in our county. For President Muhammadu Buhari, it is seemingly absurd or even contradictory that Nigeria, as more of a gas nation, focused on oil over the years, hence the more proactive push towards gas development by his administration. We acknowledge that Nigeria has still more work to do in the gas space. Gas has enormous potential to diversify and uplift Nigeria's economy. For the good of the country, we intend to seize this opportunity. Our major objective for gas sector is to transform Nigeria into an industrialized nation with gas playing a major role through enhanced accelerated gas revolution. Already, he said, remarkable progress has been made towards achieving the objectives, including developing gas infrastructure, promoting domestic gas utilization, commencing the process of commercializing gas flares, development of industrial and transport gas markets, as well as increasing gas to power. Other policies and projects kick-started include the National Gas Expansion Program, auto gas policy and the construction of the Ajakuta Kaduna Kano gas pipeline. Global developments have indeed presented us an opportunity. Gas will become the dominant fuel for generating power, not only across the world, but in Africa as well. The question now is, can we rise up to the challenge? The Ministry of Petroleum Resources and the NNPC are in various regards setting the pace. The President used the opportunity to appreciate Nigeria LNG for contributing about 1% to the nation's GDP 
$114 billion in revenues, $9 billion in taxes, $18 billion in dividends to government, and $15 billion in feed gas purchase. There were goodwill messages from Secretaries General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Gas Exporting Countries, International Energy Forum, as well as the Nigeria LNG. The conference is a prelude to the fourth edition of the International Petroleum Summit to be hosted by Nigeria later this year. Now the services sector of the Nigerian economy in the fourth quarter of 2020 contributed 54.25% to the nation's gross domestic product. The size of this sector brings to four questions around converting the size of it to money. And so before we take on today's discussion, let's hear what Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwela, the Director General of the World Trade Organization, had to say about this sector in her recent visit to Nigeria. This is the big task in front of Nigeria, and I want to see us holding more conversations about this and tapping those sources, services, a very important source. We saw that uh, uh, whiskey and Burma boy who won prizes and I want to congratulate them because they're exporting Nigeria's uh, uh, music and talents abroad and people are buying this. Mm -hmm. we, we have music, we have art, we have uh, movies. Everywhere I go abroad, people, the diaspora of Africans keeps talking about how Nigeria movies, they love them. So they, we should not neglect the creative industries because they create a lot of jobs for our young university graduates. And we must see how we can support these areas. Now, Michael Balogun is the CEO and founder of Tour to Nigeria. He joins me virtually from Lagos to look at Jim starting the tourism sector as the global economy opens gradually for trade. You're welcome, Michael, to Business Express. Okay, so we'll just move on. The federal government has launched a 50 billion naira export expansion facility program EEFP grant management system and also flagged off the Export Development Fund for non-all exports. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment Nia Dibayo says export growth is at the center of the ministry's strategy for diversifying Nigeria's sources of foreign exchange. The report. I have a wife, I have kids, I have people that feed under me. If this company closed down, what are they going to do? Are we going to beg on this feet? So we are, we, are, we are scared. As we can see, we are all scared. We are not happy. Because every day I come in, I'm afraid. I don't know what is going to happen in the next tomorrow. This was Ibrahim Ali three years ago at one of the manufacturing companies in Sharataya State, Kano. A concern they attributed to the Export Expansion Grant Facility. Many stages have been passed, and at 33.3 percent, there are concerns over the rising unemployment figures fueled by the coronavirus pandemic. However, there is good news, as the federal government flags off the Export Expansion Facility Program (EEFP) to increase non-oil export capacity in the near term and volumes in the medium term. It will also provide economic incentive to ease the economic effects of COVID-19 on players in the export sector, fast-track the zero oil plan to create jobs and further expand other avenues to earn foreign exchange in Nigeria other than crude oil. The Export Development Fund would serve to complement the other areas that were not covered by the MSME Survival Fund that is for export-oriented businesses. The Export Development Fund will support micro, small and medium enterprises with technology playing a critical role here as prospective beneficiaries would have to get online and pass through thorough checks. It is part of the 2.3 trillion Naira Economic Sustainability Plan. Uh, the President approved 350 billion Naira uh, to clear backloads uh, on the EEG. So the National Assembly has approved so far 194 billion out of it and they've been paid. So the orders that have not been paid, there are some delay in the last uh, National Assembly, the eighth National Assembly, but this one will sort it out. So they, those companies will benefit under some kind of COVID relief. But the one we learned today is the export development. That's the incentive that we have not used at all. This post-shipment grant, government says, will be of immense support to factory workers like Ibrahim Ali as it works towards moving the economy from pandemic to prosperity.
Mr. Michael, good morning. Michael Balogun, CEO and founder of Torto Nigeria. And thanks for having me. Uh, uh, great. Uh, so, well, the grammar fever is still high. Tell me now, aside music and Nollywood, what other selling points does Nigeria have for the world to see? Oh, first, I would like to say a big congratulations to Whiskey and Bonner Boy, doing us proud. And, you know, there's something I will come to before your question. Using the National Art Theatre for the performance during his Grammy, um, Grammy um, session, it showed a lot of richness in our landmark and historic places like the National Art Theatre. And, you know, it brings so much joy to see somebody actually thought that through to use that location, you know, to celebrate that victory. And it's like putting us on a global market and on a global scale, you know, everywhere in the world, everybody will want to see what lies inside that national art theater. And probably they'll do their own research and, you know, find out what national theater all stands for, apart from, you know, the first act 77 and everything else that goes inside that um, national art theater. And moving forward with that, I think it has come to show that even with entertainment, Nollywood, there's so many other things we can use our tourism to promote, you know, the culture, the carnival, our, even the culinary journey. We have a whole lot of food varieties, apart from the jollof war rice we constantly hear every other time. There's so, so many things tourism can do, can do for us as a nation, you know, take us on, a, on the world map. Now a whole lot of people want to come down to Nigeria to do either project research in our cultural um, heritage, our landmark, or even shoot a movie in some of these iconic locations. So uh, tell me, what is the flow of tourists like into the country? Well, for now, because of the COVID and the travel restrictions, it's been slow. And that would be the honest truth. It's been slow. And it has even, you know, encouraged the domestic travel now because a lot of people that would normally go abroad for easter for all their vacations are now looking inwards and we've got a lot of massive flow in the country for people trying to find where to spend their holidays vacation and you know festive period like this so talking domestic travels now do nigerians tour oh really nigerians do tour you know because i think the the positive effects of um covid has shown to us like a lot of Nigerians actually do travel. And then for the low-income earners that they can't do Dubai and all other countries, you know, they found a way to still travel. You can go to Olu Morok, you can go to um, um, Ibadan, you can come to Lagos, you can visit Badagri. You can even visit some waterfront spots as, you know, cheap and affordable for a family of five. You can do a 35,000 naira tour within Lagos. And there's so many other things opening, new resorts, new beachfront uh, houses and all that. So you can find now a lot of Nigeria has picked up the hobby of traveling. Now you're getting people calling to say, we want to go somewhere for the weekend. A family of five want to go somewhere, you know, just to hang out. And, you know, movement is part of what tourism, you know, is all about. A lot of people want to move from one location to the other. And you find out that a lot of Nigerians do really travel. They really do travel. I'll tell you that. So they say charity begins at home. What must be done to get Nigerians visit Nigeria and retain some of the travel funds at home? Yeah, I think number one, uh, the government, we need to talk about infrastructure, infrastructures, then security. Those two we can't take out of the equation. But if we start looking at the domestic markets, we need to start talking of pricing. We need to reduce the cost so people can afford, families can really afford. You don't have to think of going to the bank to take a loan just because you want to go on a vacation. So once we can try and leverage on the pricing, reducing the cost, infrastructures coming in place, we'll find out that a lot of Nigerians will actually, you know, spend more money than taking their added forex to other countries to celebrate whatever event or whatever vacation they're going for. That's just my take on it. A lot of Nigerians do want to travel. So now that the COVID has come and we are managing whatever situation is bringing, a lot is now needed to be done by the government to try and leverage on this time to help, you know, the markets and the industry really try by putting in all these structures and 
making it happen for Nigerians. Okay, so with the African continental free trade area now in place, what is there for tourism in Nigeria? Wow, well, with the free trade in place now, we are going to be seeing more of intra africa travel. A lot of people will be traveling from their own countries, not typically the European tours or the routes now. We are going to be talking of intra africa travel. A lot of connectivities are going to start coming up. People will be, you know, bringing in uh, travel products and services. You find out we have uh, logistic coaches now going in and out of um, our borders. Take, for example, the Super Eagles recently went for their match using the waterways from Lagos. And that opens up another form of domestic tourism when we start using you know, ferries and ship liners to go across the borders. And that's how you, you know, start bringing in different business and goods and services across, you know, the, the continent. That's how I, I, I figure this uh, free trade thing is going to work. And we are good for it as long as we get everything sorted out, immigration, security and all that. Thank you very much. been speaking with Michael Balogun, the CEO of Tour to Nigeria. Thank you for coming on Business Experts. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you. Do have Thank a nice you. one. Now, on surviving COVID-19 today, we bring to you this interesting dimension of a woman whose business was affected by the pandemic adversely and had to let go of more than 50% of her workforce. She's optimistic the support by the Central Bank of Nigeria will get to her, and she has lessons learned from the pandemic that has changed her forever. Mary V shares her experience. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. We sell. I sell food. I sell our local food. In short, I sell everything. Pepper soup, food, drink. I sell all. Karakashi, Kuka, Toshe, Tondawa, Tuang Acha. Name them. I sell all the plateau food, all the little and other nice food. I do want food. I sell all the food. That journey was not an easy tax. So. That journey, that journey. In short, I'll never forget that year. I will never forget that year. Well, thank God, it's over. As you can see, that coronavirus, things were so hard for us. I was having 25 staff. I reduced them to 10. Now it's only 10 staff that I have now. To tell you things are not easy. And after the lockdown, business was not moving. So I have to reduce them. If I keep 25 staff, what will I pay them with? My shop was closed for three months. My shop was closed. No business, nothing. I was just sitting at home. We are, we are my former shop, the woman. The woman was just troubling me up and down. So I decided to leave the shop. I, I applied since January. Up to now, I've not gotten it. I applied since January. Ah, well, they say I should go for training, in which I did. So, after the training, I'm still waiting for them. Keep on trying. Don't give up because of COVID. Keep on trying. Definitely, we get to that place that you want to get rich. COVID really taught me a lot of lesson. I've learned a lot, you know? Unlike before, if I have 10,000, I'll spend it all. But now, if I have 10,000, I'll spend maybe 3,000 and save 7,000. And was, to tell you, I've learned a lot of, I've learned a lot during this COVID. So thank God for COVID. <laughs> there. The non-interest capital market sector in Nigeria has been described as one that is unique and full of potentials to facilitate the objectives of deepening the financial system and spurring the growth of the Nigerian economy. The Director General Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Lamido Yuguda, stated these at the opening of a four-day executive program on non-Islamic capital market products and basic accounting treatment organized by Islamic Finance Services Board based in Malaysia and the Auditing and Accounting Organization for
for Islamic financial institutions based in Bahrain. Yugoda said the recent sovereign issuance of Sukuk by the Nigerian Debt Management Office, which were all oversubscribed, stressed the need to enhance the SEC's regulatory capacity, adding that the sovereign Sukuk issuance set the benchmark for other corporates to issue Sukuk for various developmental activities. He added that SEC's quest for in-depth knowledge for non-interest capital market products, operations and services is further underscored by the recent increase in market activities. Now, the dollar climbed to a one-year high against the yen on Tuesday amid a spike in Treasury yields as accelerating vaccinations and massive stimulus in the U.S. stoked inflation concerns. Let's now see how the Naira is exchanging for the currencies. Now, Asia-Pacific stocks are mixed this morning. Numerous stocks also continued to slide following Monday's tumble. Boston Abel reports. Global markets appear to be stabilizing following market nervousness in the U.S., which overshadowed market sentiment last Friday. The pan-European stock 600 gained 0.5% in early trade, led by a 1.4% rebound for banks as almost all sectors and major bourses entered positive territory. U.S. stock index futures were mixed in early pre-market trading despite the Dow Jones Industrial Average rising to a new record on Monday. The moves came amid the continued fallout after a hedge fund was forced to liquidate its position in several media stocks. Shares in Asia Pacific were mixed on Tuesday as investors watched movement in shares of Japanese financial services firm Nomura following their Monday plunge. The Nikkei in Japan traded fractionally higher. Meanwhile, mainland Chinese stocks were higher by afternoon, with the Shanghai Composite gaining 0.5%. U.S. stock index futures were mixed during early morning trading on Tuesday after the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at a record high. Futures contrast tied to the Dow advanced 65 points. S&P 500 futures traded above the flat line, while Nasdaq 100 futures were in negative territory. Some Africa stocks, like the Namibia's overall index, South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40, and Tunisia's Tunidex, are hopeful to resume trade positive. Steve, Boss Day Able, Business Express. Next is a trip to the commodities market. That we come to the end of this edition of Business Express. Remember to keep in touch with us, so do send in your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also, be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter, and the handle is NTA News Now, and the hashtag is BizX. Business Express returns Wednesday at 3 p.m. I'm Leah Katun Baba Tunde saying, keep thinking and doing business. Be safe out there. <music>